Hey everyone, Matt with Triple Oct Adventures. Thank you guys for joining me this week. This is gonna be a relatively short video this week, but I am making this specifically for my subscribers. You guys reached out on my video last week on this topic, specifically asking for this, so this week we're gonna do that for you. Without further ado, what are we talking about? We are talking about installing platform tools, which is part of the ADB, the Android Debug Bridge, onto a Mac. So if you haven't watched last week's video, I highly recommend doing that. I'll link a little card up on the top right for you guys to click that, watch that first. This will make a lot more sense to you, but this week is gonna be specific to doing this on a Mac computer. So let's get started, let's get into it. We're gonna cut over to my computer where we have a screen capture of us uh, getting this going and we'll go from there. All right guys, so you guys requested this last week. We're gonna dig right into this immediately. We have a screen capture of my uh, Mac right now. I should note this is uh, a Mac with Al Apple Silicon. I do not own an older version of a Mac, so I have not tested it on that, but we're gonna do this right now today. So, uh, just like last week's video, I will have a link in the description to any of these links, but you feel free to follow along. I can also tell you um, what these uh, pathways are while we're doing this if you'd like to follow along that way. So first things first, we need to download the actual platform tools. Like I said, there'll be a link in the description below, but if you'd like to type it in yourself, go right up to the top here, we've got developer.android.com forward slash tools, forward slash releases, forward slash platform dash tools. That will take you to, whoop, Sorry, there's a drop down on the top here that's annoying. But there is this screen here that you will come to. This allows you to download the platform tools. As you can see, there are three different options, Windows, which we did in last week's video, Mac, and Linux. So let's get going. We're gonna click this Mac button. It will pop up with terms and conditions. I have already read this, so you know, obviously you should. But once you're done reading it, scroll to the bottom, say you agree, and download. In my case, I have a setting on my thing where it makes me allow any kind of downloads. And if you have fast internet like mine, it will uh, download automatically, very quickly. All right, so I like to put stuff on my desktop, so I'm gonna drag and drop that over to my desktop. We're gonna open up that folder here. And we now have platform tools installed. It auto, um, if you guys watched last week's video on, on Windows, you actually have to extract it and all that. In this case, you do not. All right, so we're at this screen and we uh, need to now go over to the Android device, AKA our uh, Garmin Tread device. In my case, the Garmin Tread XL Overland. And we need to prep that device in order to connect to this. So let's cut over to that right now. All right, guys, so now I've showed you guys how to download ADB onto your computer and get that up and running. The next step is to prepare your Android device. Obviously, in this case, is the Garmin Tread. So first thing that we need to do is enable developer mode, and then from there, we're gonna enable USB debugging. So I did already, obviously, I already have apps installed on this, so I went ahead and turned off developer mode just so I could show you guys how you turn it on. So first steps, we're at our home screen here, and don't mind my hand coming in here. We're gonna go into settings. We're then gonna scroll down to about device, which will be at the very bottom. And then from here, we're gonna scroll down until you see build number. Mine says dev keys, because mine's already been enabled, but you're gonna just simply keep pressing this and see how at the bottom there, it had a thing that said, keep pressing until like three, two, one, now you're a developer. Now, when you go back, you will now notice at the bottom, you now have a developer options. So again, let me actually turn this off quick and I'll show you how to do it a little bit slower. So we're gonna go to settings first, scroll down, go to about device, scroll all the way to the bottom 
and you're going to keep pressing build number until a message pops up down here and it'll, it'll kind of give you a countdown of how many times you need to press it. You're four steps, two steps, one step away, and you are now our developer. Now simply back out, and when you scroll down, you will now see an option for developer options. Now, we have developer uh, mode or options in, uh, activated on the device. We're now going to open that. Now from here, there are uh, a lot of things in here you honestly do not want to mess with. Um, you can actually really mess up your device. This is really designed for, well, developers. But what we are looking for is the USB, let's see here, USB debugging right here. We're going to turn that on. And it'll say USB debugging is intended for developer purpose only. It is use it to copy data between your computer and device, install apps on your device without notification, read log data, that kind of stuff. We're going to say OK. That is how you prep your device. Now, it's about, I don't know, maybe three or four scrolls down. One, two, three. It was about three sc scrolls down. You guys should see that. If you cannot find it, another option is you can always type it in up here. You can go to search and type in USB and you'll find it right there as well. And it'll scroll down for you. So that's an option as well. Those are the steps that we first need to do before we can do anything. Without that uh, developer mode on and the USB debugging on, you will not be able to actually communicate with the device through um, the Android uh, protocol that we downloaded on our Windows device. So now that we have that enabled, we're gonna go back over to our computer and we're going to plug in the USB cable to, from our computer, well, into our computer, and also into the side of the Android device. Uh, in this case, there's a little door on this side here with a USB-C port. So we're going to connect those up, and I'll show you guys the next steps. All right, so we are back to the Mac here with our screen recording. Where we left off last time was we were in the Platform Tools folder. I did have it on full screen but you will see why, like this, but you will see why I minimized it here in just a second. All right, so if you watched last week's video, you may be kind of following along and knowing what's going on, but the next step we need to do is open up our command line, or in Mac case, the terminal. The easiest way to do that is you press your command and space bar, it'll come up with your spotlight search, you type in the terminal app, and it'll open up terminal. Now, unlike, Mac, uh, unlike Windows where you can open up terminal directly from a folder, in this case, we need to um, pretty much attach the folder that we need to work from onto the terminal. In order to do that, you're going to type in CD, press space, and we're actually going to drag and drop the platform's folder right over. And as you can see, it gives you the pathway to that folder. Press enter. And you will now see that it says you are in platform tools. That is great news. All right, the next step is to actually plug in our Garmin device, AKA our Android device into the laptop. So you're gonna take your USB cable, plug it into your Garmin device, plug it into your computer. In my case, I have already done this, but you will see a pop-up on your screen here or should see a pop-up that says, you know, what do you want to do with this device? Do you want to allow this connection? Make sure you click allow. Now, also, if you look over at your Android device, you should see something that says allow USB debugging, your computer's fingerprint is blah, 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 and you want to make sure you click allow. This is just like, say, for instance, you were pairing your phone to your car for your first time on Bluetooth. You have to ena enable that pairing on both ends. All right, so if you followed along in the Windows video from last week, you know that we now need to check to make sure it's actually working. And you may be asking, what are those commands? Let's open up our Safari terminal here. Let's scroll up to the top here for you guys. So like I said, I'll have links in the description to all of this. And uh, these is, I'm sorry, this is a list from Team Android of all the commands that you would use in ADB. In this case, just like last week when we did this in Windows, we want ADB devices. This provides a list of devices that are currently connected to your computer. So let's just minimize this quick, and we are going to type in ADB devices. But first, we need to do period, forward slash, no space, do ADB, space, devices. My case, it pops up immediately and says the device is connected. If this is your first time doing this, it may come up saying there's a TCP protocol and it is attaching. If for any reason it doesn't pop up the very first time, just type it in again. You can either type it in manually 
Or fun fact, if you press the up arrow, it pulls up your previous command or commands that you've typed in. Just press enter again, and you now should see list of devices attached. If you have this here, yours may not be this number, but if you have this device here showing, congratulations, you are connected to your device via the platform tools on a Mac computer. Now, the next step is we need to download an APK file. Um, I've already done this, so I'm just gonna delete this one off of my thing so that you guys can actually follow along. We're gonna open up our Safari uh, or whatever browser of choice. And once again, um, I will have links in the description to all this, so please follow along uh, with that. We are gonna go to the APK Mirror Aurora Store uh, download page. Let me just go back so you guys see the same page that I would, or I'm sorry, I'm on the same page that you guys would see. You're gonna see this. You're gonna click download. Just so you are aware, APK Mirror is a very secure site of APK files, so you have nothing to worry about. In my case, uh, when this pops up, I have to allow any downloads. That's just due to the settings I have in um, Safari. So I'm gonna click allow, and it, it instantaneously downloads that. So we're just gonna minimize our browser. We're gonna drag and drop that APK file onto our desktop. Again, you guys can work from, I, didn't, I shouldn't say again, you guys can work from any folder you want. I just like to work from the desktop. All right, so next thing, we need to type in our command into our terminal in order to download that APK file onto our Android device. So once again, we could have actually left this open. We are gonna go back over to that command list and if you just scroll down, you'll see it's install, but just a fun fact, if you're at the top, this is all the commands. And if you click one, it'll drag you down. So. What we're looking for is to install an app, which is ADB install. And this will tell you, you know, there's a lot of details here. Say you wanted to update an app or you wanted to download it specifically to an SD card file. There's a lot of options here. In our case, we are gonna be working with this top one, which is ADB space install space, whatever the name of the APK file is. And Mac actually makes this really easy. So let's minimize this. We're gonna go back over to our terminal here. We're gonna type in period, forward slash, ADB, space, install, space, and we're gonna drag and drop that file that you just downloaded, that APK file, and this could be any APK file, just so you guys are aware. It will automatically put in all of the pathway to that APK file right into there, which is super nice that Mac does that, and you're just gonna click, return, enter, on your keyboard. You will now it's, see it says performing streamed install. Ideally, it says success. I have never had it not, but it will say success. And you have now successfully installed that APK file directly onto your Garmin device or your Android device. Now all you have to do is disconnect your uh, computer and we can go over to the device here and I'll show you the next steps here on the Android device itself. All right, guys. So we just installed AD, ADB on our computer. We uh, showed you guys how to enable the device. We've got the APK file installed from the USB cable onto our device and you're probably going, all right, now how do I get to it? All right, so anytime you install an app on your device, yeah, go away update. Uh, anytime you install an app on your device, uh, you're gonna click apps. You're then gonna go down to tools. So it may start out in like navigation or something. You go down to tools and you will see, um, I have a bunch of different apps already installed, but you will see that Aurora store somewhere. All right, you're gonna click that, and now Aurora store is now open. You're gonna follow through these steps, and you're gonna have to grant a few permissions. This allows you to install apps on your device uh, and do updates and all that. This will actually manage updating files and everything. It's a super slick way of having uh, quote unquote Google store on your device without actually having Google store. You'll also see in a minute allows you to run anonymously or you could actually log in with your Google account if you wanted to. So first things first, we're gonna click grant on installer permission. It will say un install unknown apps. You're gonna say yes. And then we're gonna click back at the bottom. External access, yes. And back row downloads, yes. Click finish. And like I said, you'll either have the option of logging in via your Google account, which I will not be doing today, or you can go anonymously. You can click anonymous. 
And this, guys, is going to be a full-blown Google Store for the most part. And you're not going to have everything on here, but you're going to have a lot. So before we get too far, I wanted to show you guys how to uh, put this application onto your home screen. So let's just go to our uh, main thing here. Um, we're going to go back to apps. Find whatever thing you want to add to your home screen, which in this case is Aurora Store. We're going to press and hold. And it'll pop up like that. You can now drag it to whatever home screen you want. I actually have a home screen with all the apps that I have installed. We're going to drag and drop it there. Now, say you want to install some apps. Let's just do a quick uh, example here. I have these uh, first aid things. These are from uh, American Red Cross. They are a free offline application that allows you to see and know how to diagnose and treat things. Um, say you're out in the field and somebody has some sort of symptom or a small wound. This kind of shows you how to do that. Pretty slick, it's free, works great. So again, we're gonna open up that Aurora store. There is a search function. And in this case, let's just type in Red Cross. It should find it. Uh, yeah, Red Cross. It does, great. So we've got um, like pet first aid, regular first aid, and whatever app you want to click, you would click it. Uh, actually, let's click one that we don't have installed just so you guys can see it. It will either say manual download or install. You literally just click install. It will pop up another screen on your, um, actually, you know what, let's pick something that would actually be interesting. Um, I don't even know. Well, let's say childcare. Let's do YouTube because we're on YouTube. We're gonna click install. It will start installing it. Well, it'll start downloading it from the Aurora store. When it goes to install on your actual device, it will pop up with another screen that says, would you like to um, install it? There we go. We're gonna click install. Now I will tell you guys, I have tested YouTube in the past. It does not run very well on this Android device. I don't think it has enough RAM to really run it, but you can do it. <laughs> And once it's done, it'll say it's successfully installed and it shows open. So once again, say you wanted to add it to the home screen, you're gonna go back to, you know, this always takes you back to your home screen. You're gonna click apps, make sure you're on tools, and we're gonna scroll down until we see YouTube. Press and hold, drag to whatever screen you would like it on. And fun fact, if you don't have like, see how there's like another screen here, a brand new one, you can also drag it over to a brand new one if you don't have a screen available yet. And that's how you install apps, guys. All right, everyone. Thank you guys so much for joining me this week. I know this was a quick video, but I wanted to get this filmed for you guys. I did some testing this week in between some of my uh, you know, daily tasks to try to get this, make sure it was working for you guys. Um, there was a few hiccups on my end. So I worked all through that and made this as easy as possible for you guys. I know you requested it. Hopefully it's helpful. I know some of you guys have Mac, some of you has Windows. I have both, so this was a perfect scenario for me to show everybody how to use this method. Thank you guys again so much for joining me every single week. If you haven't already, smash that like button, hit subscribe, click that notification bell, leave some comments below. You guys are awesome. The channel's been growing like crazy. I've got some cool content coming soon, but we're working through all these fun little tasks in the meantime. Stay tuned, we'll see you guys next week.